Hey everybody, I'm going to go ahead and talk today about a topic that's uh, frequently a challenge for folks uh, working with Excel spreadsheets, and that's uh, preparing the document or the spreadsheet for printing. Uh, I've got an example we're going to work with today, and uh, we're going to show you how we can easily overcome this challenge if you know how to work with a few different adjustments, and also it's a function of taking a look at the spreadsheet that you're working with. Uh, the example I've been provided here is uh, from a friend who works at a uh, tat tax preparing uh, office and uh, it looks like it's just simply a form. So let's go ahead and have a go here. Now the skills we're going to demonstrate and discuss today include copy and paste, a very simple a basic uh, function, merge and center, which will show you how to merge a title across a span of rows, and adjusting row heights. We're going to do that uh, manually. So here's our challenge. Uh, we want to combine two separate sheets that I was provided with with a different number of columns into a single sheet. We're also going to set it such the result is a single sheet that prints onto a single legal page, uh, which is 8.5 by 14. So here's the first sheet. It's formatted here. It's a form, and uh, you see it's got, uh, you know, it goes out to column V here on our page, only about 17 rows of data. And here's the second sheet, and this is how it was provided to me. Um, and this one goes out to column X. So we have a differing number of columns. So uh, let's go ahead and have a go here. Here's the, uh, the bottom sheet, and I'm going to switch over to our top sheet. And here's our top sheet. Uh, the view we're looking at, uh, incidentally, is uh, if you go to your View tab, it's the Page Layout View which kind of gives you a, a, a visual in terms of uh, the spreadsheet and if it's going to flow over to additional pages. You see you've got pages to the right, to the bottom, with these separations between them. Uh, you might be used to using the normal view, and here in the normal view you can see a very fine dotted line which shows where the page break would appear, um, and you have your page break preview as well. But uh, the view here is a page layout. It's just something to be wary of. And your different page views occur under the View tab of the ribbon at your top. All right, now let's take a look at the other sheet that we're combining here, which is the bottom routing sheet. All right, now we're just going to use a copy and paste. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and highlight and drag across the selection here from left top to bottom right. I'm going to select everything. Now you've got different ways of copying and pasting. If you like to use a keyboard, combination control C will do it. Um, you can also right click your mouse and choose copy from the menu, which I'm doing. It's copying what I've selected to the clipboard. You see the little marching ants or the border around the selection. And then I'm going to shift over to our other sheet, which is the top sheet. All right, I'm going to click where I want this to go. I'm going to skip a row there and I'm going to go ahead and click the active cell where I want it to go, I can right click and I can paste. Alright, well, okay, that brings it in great, but you see what happens? This overlaps not only to a second sheet below, but it also flows over to the right side. Because if you remember, the initial uh, upper portion of the sheet only went out to column B, the bottom portion went out to column X. You know, not a big deal. But when you're trying to figure out how to format this, in this case to get it to fit on a single page, we're going to have to understand the way the, the sheet was created, these different sections and borders. And um, what I want to do here is I just want to break these off. I see all the checkboxes here, and they appear where I want them. There's no checkboxes flowing over to the left, I'm sorry, the right side. So what I want to do here is I want to just simply put a border uh, on the right side here and separate the section off. Then I can get rid of the excess here. Um, it looks like this is a form designed to be printed and filled out. Uh, if I look at it here, these check boxes don't seem to allow check functionality with a mouse click. So it looks like this is a paper form designed to be filled out, um, perhaps printed and filled out by hand. That, that much I don't know. But uh, one thing we see here is this section here, when we're trying to com merge, combine this inward, um, this whole span of columns, when I click where it says Special Instructions and Notes, one of the sections I need to re reduce in width, that whole heading is selected. 
And if I see the row below that, the same thing. Well, that's a feature in Excel called Merge and Center. And we're going to take that Merge and Center away so we can compress or condense this. Now, if we go up to the ribbon, under the Home tab, Merge and Center, is that's where that option is. And if you see, when you click onto that heading, Merge and Center becomes gray as if it's selected. So if you just select the heading, and we're going to unmerge and center. Now what it does is it's going to shift that uh, heading, that section heading, all the way to the left, which is fine. But that's going to let us start to manipulate the data we have here. We also seem to have a few rows that are also merged and centered. I'm not sure why, but we need to take that setting away as well. So I'm going to click the row that has that and I'm going to click Merge and Center to take it off. And what it does is it then redivides the row into the separate cells or columns. And here's one more. I'm going to go ahead and take Merge and Center off there. There you go. Now what I can do is I can select down here to create the border on the right side. But if I notice when I go further down, all of a sudden it expands again. Well, there's another section heading that has Merge and Center turned on for it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn Merge and Center off there also. Now I can click and drag down this section. What I'm going to do here, instead of worrying about uh, which border and the line thickness and everything else, to terminate this section at the right side of this page before the page division, is I'm going to use Format Painter, which is a tremendous tool here, a huge time saver. And that exists on the Home tab of your ribbon at the top. So what you want to do is you want to select only the selection that you'd like to copy the attributes of. So over here, I want to go ahead and have that border on the right side to complete the box. So I'm only going to select the rightmost portion of that table, and I'm going to borrow those attributes and bring them over here. So with the selection highlighted that you want to borrow the attributes of, then go up and click Format Painter. As you move your cursor down, you're going to see it takes on the look of a little paintbrush. And then click the top of where you want that formatting to occur. Click and look. It automatically creates my border. I can discard what's on the right side now. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for the bottom sections here. I'm going to see if I have any merge and center issues, and I don't. So I can actually select that column uh, or the selection of uh, cells. And I'm going to use Merge and Center as well. Or, you know, I can just highlight this. I can go up to my borders, come down to more borders, and then decide, you know, what thickness of line I want to apply to the right side of that section. But, you know, Merge and Center will do that much more easily. Just select the portion that you'd like to apply, highlight it, click Format Painter, click where you want it to go, and there you go. Terrific. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wipe out this section on the right. And a real easy way to do that is to highlight what you want to get rid of. And on the Home tab, the far side of the ribbon, there's a Clear option. And under Clear, there's a drop-down. You have different things you can clear, formats, hyperlinks, comments from the selected range. I'm going to choose Clear All, and it takes care of removing those borders and shading. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing down below. I'm going to go ahead and see, okay, I can't select this because it's got Merge and Center applied to that heading. So I need to highlight the heading or select it, come up, click Merge and Center to turn it off. It moves the heading to the far left of that selection. Then, let's see if it's anywhere else, no. Then I'm going to go ahead and just simply apply and borrow the formatting. Select what I want. I only want that, uh, that end section there just to cap this part off, highlight it, Click Format Painter, bring the paintbrush down, click the top, and there it goes. Terrific. Now we're going to clear this. If you remember how we did that, select the section within which you want to clear the contents. Go up and click Clear, Clear All, Done. All right. Now we're starting to look better, but we still have this overflow. This section overflows to the next page. And um, it looks like there's more spacing in between the boxes on this form which we're going to adjust by adjusting the row heights. If I go back to the original bottom, you see how some of the rows, you can see by the row headers in the left, the numbers are very, very shallow to, to pull these sections closer together and create the form or the look of the form. So let me come back, so let me come back over again. 
and uh, we want to recenter those section headings across those boxes. So in order to use merge and center and center the title across the section, click and drag the span of cells across which you'd like to center it, then go up, locate the merge and center, click it, and there you go. It merges those cells together as if they were a single cell, and it centers the title or the text across it. We're going to do the same thing here as well. You can use the Format uh, Painter tool to do this as well. And this one down below also. Let's go ahead and get that done. Great. Okay. All right. Now we want to adjust and enable so we can bring the, the overflow up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to manually reduce these row heights. You can reduce the row heights manually by going over to the row headers, which are in the left. And uh, if you move your cursor in between the numbers, you'll see you get a, a two-headed arrow. At that point, you can click and drag to reduce the row height and release it. And you see how it's bringing everything upward. I'm going to reduce the rows that I want to make shorter. And I'm going to do it again here. And if you hold it in, you'll see the number of pixels or the equivalent of inches in terms of how much or how high that row is. Let me come down here. It looks like it's bringing the overflow up into the same sheet. Let me see, I still need to go a little bit further. And I can revert back and take a look at the original bottom and see where I have some shorter rows. Okay. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to reduce the height of additional rows and see if I can get this all to fit. There are a few different ways you can do it. I think I might be able to pull it off here. All right, let's reduce the height of this one. And I think we want to reduce the height of this one. Just click and drag and release. All right, where else? I think of this one right here. Oh, great, and take a look at what we have. It brought everything onto a single form. Just want to double check visually and make sure everything looks good. One thing you'll see is if we go back to the original that the space in between the sections or the boxes is very thin. Well, that's because the corresponding columns are very thin. And um, one thing you can't change in a spreadsheet is the, the width of a column at different locations in your sheet. So we might be limited there because if we were to make column E, for example, narrower, that would affect this portion here, and we don't want to do that. Um, and we have the same thing here for column L. But nonetheless, I think it's a fair compromise. So let's take a look at our print settings. And to verify what you're going to get before you print, if you go to File and you go to Print, you'll see a preview here. You'll see a visual of how many pages you have all together. And if it still does overflow onto a second page, you can use the scaling options here to fit the sheet and force it on one page or to force all columns or rows onto one page. But here we look good. Um, keep in mind in this particular instance, this is set to legal. If you wanted to print to standard letterhead paper, uh, you're going to have to compress this a lot more and I don't think that would work out too well for you. So uh, there you have it. Uh, that's a an approach to getting a form to print onto a single page. Again, it's a function of how much data you have and the original construction of the spreadsheet. But in this case, I think we have a result we like. Uh, don't forget to save your work. And I hope this was helpful for you. Look forward to adding additional content in the uh, days ahead. It's been a long time since I hit some Excel topics, so I'm happy to do so. Thanks for watching.